From the autumn of 1818 until the spring of 1824, the German romantic poet Clemens Brentano abandoned his flourishing career as a literary light in secular society in order to keep vigil at the bedside of a stigmatized nun in Westphalia, Anne Catherine Emmerich. She received the wounds of Christ on her body, but it was her amazing power of clairvoyance which attracted Brentano to her side. For she had the gift of seeing into the past, present, and future to a degree unequaled by any other stigmatist in history. And she claimed that God sent Brentano to her in order to make her visions known to the world. Sixty years later, a French artist, James Joseph Tizot, read Brentano's account of Anne Catherine Emmerich's revelations and experienced a spiritual conversion. He decided to dedicate the rest of his career to illustrating the life of Christ in the Gospels. And, by 1897, the resulting The Life of Our Lord Jesus Christ was published. Much of what Tizot portrayed was influenced by Brentano's account of Emmerich's Mystical Revelations, published in 1833 under the title The Dolorous Passion of Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As the illustrations reflect, Emmerich's visions of the Passion of Christ are highly descriptive, enabling viewers to feel an immediate presence to the sublime event. Tizot's images are inspired by the words of the visionary down to their most gruesome detail. This is especially true concerning the hammering of the first nail. As Emmerich saw it, a sweet, dear, spasmodic cry of anguish broke from the Lord's lips as his blood spurted out upon the arms of the executioners. I counted the strokes of the hammer, but my anguish made me forget the number. The Blessed Virgin sobbed in a low voice, but Magdalene was perfectly crazed. Both arms had been torn from the sockets. The shoulders were distended and hollow. Jesus' breast heaved, and his legs were drawn up, doubled to his body. The abdomen was entirely displaced, and it seemed as if the ribs broke away from the breastbone. The symbolism of salvation history is not lost in Emmerich's visions. With the raising of the cross so dramatically portrayed in Tizot's illustration, the visionary sees the sacrifice on Calvary paralleling the Passover sacrifice going on at the same time inside the temple precincts in Jerusalem. Emmerich continues, The position of the sun at the time of Jesus' crucifixion showed it to be about a quarter past twelve, and at the moment the cross was lifted, the trumpet of the temple resounded. The paschal lamb had been slaughtered. Minute by minute, hour by hour, the watch at the passion proceeds. Angelic seraphim mark the passing of time with a clock. During the mocking of Christ, the crowd is shown surging forward, taunting Christ and those dear to him who are forced out of the way. Emmerich continues, Twelve Pharisees, twelve Sadducees, twelve scribes, and some of the ancients likewise rode up the mount. They rode around the circle and drove away the Blessed Virgin, calling her a dissolute woman. They wagged their heads contemptuously, saying, Liar! How do you destroy the temple and build it again in three days? The soldiers, in like manner, mocked and said, If you are the king of the Jews, help yourself now. In Tizot's illustrations, the sky turns dark, but the activity on Calvary becomes highlighted by a mysterious illumination. The prints look cinematic, as if they were storyboards for a movie, and, indeed, many a movie maker has referred to them. Yet, despite all their realism, 
Tizot was not afraid to shy away from inserting images of the miraculous and the marvelous. In one print, called It is Finished, the artist surrounds the crucified Redeemer with the spirits of prophets from the Old Testament. They are suspended in space, and they hold aloft the scripture which is fulfilled here in this sacrifice. All the drama and the pathos of the passion story spills over the page in a medley of printed word and picture. Passion narratives have a long tradition in Catholic culture, but none of them have had the wrenching drama and artistic staying power as this one, first envisioned by a stigmatic nun, written by a romantic poet, and designed by a society painter turned gospel illustrator. It was Tizot's most ambitious work, and one that crowned his spiritual conversion. <laughs>